Mr. Chairman, sir, Lieutenant General Zamiri Bin Shah Saab, former Vice Chancellor of the University, University. Professor D.P. Agarwal, former Chairman of the UPSC. Uh, Mr. Bamiul Haq, my elder brother and the founder of this absolutely magnificent university here. This is my first trip to this university. Pradeep Kumar Sen, a senior from the university and someone I look up to. Uh, distinguished panelists, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's an extremely huge privilege for me to, to be here sharing, sharing the platform with some, a galaxy of distinguished persons speaking about Sir Sayyid's legacy and trying to introspect as to whether we, the alumni of the institution that he created, have been able to take his vision forward or not. I heard the Professor Raza Hak speak, who is a friend, and I'd like to take a cue from what Professor Sharma said in his remarks. If you were to look back 150 years ago, think about the state that the country was in, there is nothing but the applause that you would have for service of Ahmad Khan, who, despite having a career, and despite not being truly in the social sector, to have thought of creating an institution like the Aligarh Muslim University that has provided education, like Professor Sharma said, to the people in the last 150 years. I think it's time for each one of us to ask ourselves I just finished my speech. as to what we have specifically done to honor this legacy. When we go back to the times that he lived in, he was a Shadistadar, moving on to become an officer of the court. But to have thought of establishing something like a scientific society in those times and acknowledging that the Muslim community continued to be deeply entrenched in dogma and orthodoxy and acknowledgement that Western education is the only way forward. It takes immense guts to stand up and to have been able to talk about you know, or promote interfaith consultation in those times. The fact that Sir Sayyid Ahmad Khan continued to persevere, continued to talk about, you know, creating a scientific spirit among the Muslim community initially, and trying to understand religion, being a, a very pious Muslim himself, from the perspective of reason is something that you and I could not probably have dreamt of in those times. I think all of us would do him great service if we were to continue to work, it's, there are just a few Mahmoudul Haqs who will probably come up with institutions like this. But I think it's time for each one of us to understand and to figure out for ourselves as to what we can individually perhaps do 
join Mr. Mahmoud Haq and work independently and commit ourselves to the improvement of education, not just in the Northeast, but also across India. I thought often, you know, when I'm asked to speak, I, I did mention this to Mr. Haq the other day, when we met at the Day Hotel for Sir Sayyid Ahmed Day celebrations. And I mentioned this particular article that I had read recently, authored by Swami Nathan Anklis Sharia Ayer, who is an economist of fame, who spoke about the need for the Muslim community to get out of, of this perceived, like Professor Sharma said, perceived bias and prejudice against the community, and to tell ourselves that in order to be able to grab a seat in a prestigious college or in a particular profession, one has to be probably slightly above par. And if you look at the performances of you know, people from this community across services, you will find that things are improving. And if you were to constantly you know, go back and have this discussion among ourselves that we are being discriminated against, I don't think it is going to help our community in any way. So the first and fundamental imperative for us is to tell each other that education is the way forward, that it is not enough for you to look at education, like Professor Sharma said, as a means to your job. It is um, a tool for empowerment, and even if it won't in a position where education can't give you a job, it will still open up doors that you can't even think of. Doors that will give you livelihood, doors that actually provide you with dignity as you go along earning your bread and butter. So, it is important for us, particularly in the context of the Northeast, to understand that while education uh, is available, there are a lot of institutions offering quality education, affordable quality education, but I think what needs to be done for people of our community is also to counsel people into getting into the system of education. If you have still about 30 odd percent of, of the community who do not, you know, enter uh, you know, the realm of academics or, uh, I mean, do not get literate. And if you still have dropouts, uh, you know, from those communities, even as they are halfway through the pursuit of education, I think we would have failed the community. So even as we go about creating institutions, uh, like Professor Sharma said, uh, you know, uh, opening up schools in the interim from where people can, uh, you know, come up for higher education, it is also imperative for us to tell members of the community that education is the answer to all our woes and all that seems to be apparently wrong with the community today. These are trying times, no doubt, but I think when you are faced with a challenge, it's only then that it's only then that you end up, you know, uh, coming up with a response that can take on these challenges. And I think all of us need to. Uh, sit back and introspect. Uh, like Angus area, I will say this is an article. There was a time when uh, the, the universities of, uh, say, Samarkand and Bukhara and, and Kiva, they produce some of the best, some of the best names uh, in science, people who have actually contributed so much to the, the, to the promotion of science across the world. And today, uh, we have just a few institutions created more than you know, hundreds of years ago to cater to the specific needs of the community. So it's time for all of us to actually, like Professor Sharma says, to think about you know, doing this as, I mean, setting up institutions uh, purely as uh, a gesture of philanthropy 
and also as you know a service to the community it is not impossible given the amount of money that all of us individually pay as a cap i think it's time for all of us to think in terms of using those funds and creating institutions worthy of uh, you know the name and start calling themselves madrasas in order to also you know uh, uh, deflect the kind of uh, of negative uh, the negativity that is currently associated with the word madrasa so if you look at sachar committee's report only about 4% of the muslims actually study in madrasas a large majority still continue to be to depend on western education and the kind of education uh, the, the the secular western education model that we have it is important for us to go to take that forward and like i said each one of us has a role to play i think uh, we have done our fair bit in in removing dogma and orthodoxy and approaching most of our things in life from the perspective of 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 reason uh, it is only a journey that we have begun and i'm sure with your efforts and with the vision that sir sayed khan had sayed ahmed khan had laid down 150 odd years ago uh, uh, we can like he says uh, uh, you know in a weak position where the visions of sir sayed ahmed khan uh, would actually uh, be be seen in tangible terms on the ground uh, tangible terms on the ground uh, Thank you once again for having me here. I have been absolutely uh, fascinated. Uh, I was absolutely fascinated by Professor Sharma's keynote address. Uh, it's it's an honor to share stage, like I said, with Professor Sufyan Big, who I haven't met, of course, and uh, uh, the organizers. I wish you well. I wish uh, this continues. This is a tradition that continues. And perhaps next time when we meet uh, next year, we need to speak as to where we have gone from today. till another year and try and actually find out uh, you know tangible uh, uh, things that have happened in the in 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 the year uh, thank you again so much for having me